Well, let's take a look at my new Cape Horn Integral self-steering wind vane. The wind vane steers the boat so the crew doesn't have to. It's not so easy to explain how they work. It's the wind, only the wind, no electricity involved, just a mechanical apparatus that steers the boat's rudder. It does that by sensing which direction the wind is coming from at present. You can see that the vane is standing straight up and down and it's pointing into the wind like a weather vane. If the boat deviates from its course, which we can see is pretty straight given the wake behind us, why then the wind angle on the vane changes. That's all the vane knows. Wait, something has gone wrong. We're off course. I'm going to flop a little bit to one side, as I am now. How that could keep a boat going in a straight line against the enormous forces of sails, wind, and these four to six foot rolling seas and 25 knots is a mystery, the answer to which is the pendulum self-steering vane. The vane is capable only of a tiny signal force. That is, I can move that easily with my hand, and so can the wind. The genius of this design is that there's also a steering, a blade in the water. That's the pendulum steering arm, so-called, because it can move side to side like a pendulum. What's moving it from side to side is the signal provided by the wind vane. What makes it move is the clever fact that through an apparatus designed in this case by Yves Gelinot, the designer, manages to transmit that signal force into a rotary force which subtly changes the angle of the steering blade in the water. And when that angle changes, the enormous force of water going by at seven knots forces it to go from side to side. It doesn't think, it just obeys. The turning of the blade is so subtle it can hardly be noticed. But it's like putting your hand out the window of a car. If you turn your palm up, your hand flies upward. This is the hydrodynamic equivalent of that. And the beauty of it is, the faster you go, the more force on the steering blade to move it. What happens next is, that lateral force, the pendulum movement side to side of the steering blade, gets transmitted to the inside of the boat. This design is unique to the Cape Horn gear. It has its own quadrant installed by a tube through a three and a half inch hole in the transom of the boat. Those lines move the steering wheel. As if by magic but it's much more mechanical than magic. Most self-steering vanes just connect the apparatus on the stern to the steering wheel with a couple of lines around a drum. And that turns the steering wheel, and you can watch it turn the rudder in the normal way. The Cape Horn uses a different approach. Welcome to the world below the cockpit on a typical sailboat. This is the rudder tube, which holds the rudder 
which comes up from the bottom of the boat here and up into the cockpit above where we saw the steering wheel on its pedestal. And this is the ship's quadrant. The quadrant is a heavy bronze uh, fitting connected by wires to the steering wheel that allows the turn of the wheel to make a partial turn of the rudder and thereby control the boat. It uses wires and chains. What the Cape Horn plan does is connect this, the ship's quadrant, to its own quadrant back there on the transom through a series of control lines that are sufficiently daunting in their complexity, the way they work, has to just about drive me crazy when I was installing it. In a nutshell, only parts of the control line move. This pulls from side to side this pin in the added fastener on the bottom of the quadrant. That line of force traces this line through a couple of blocks back to the quadrant. But it can't be permanently in place or you wouldn't be able to steer the boat using the steering wheel, so an extra line continues here, goes to a turning point on that block and up to the cockpit. That exists so that this whole apparatus can be relieved of its tension and steering manually is possible. I said it was controversial that all this stuff is below decks. Controversial for me because it means every day I have to take the gear out and come down here and make sure nothing's falling apart. Which is a routine procedure for everything on a sailboat at sea, but not so routine when everything is so neatly and elegantly hidden where nobody can see it. Here's how the whole business is engaged and disengaged. These are the two lines we saw running straight up. They connect to the cockpit. Simply by yanking these forward and letting this go slackens all the lines. At that point the boat is entirely steerable by its steering wheel in the usual way. You re-engage the gear, you just grab this here and you yank it back tight and off you go again. Getting in and out of lockers in a seaway once a day, well, it adds to the fun, I suppose. Why such commitment to daily inspection for all these parts? Well, it's blowing 25 knots. The wind vane works 24 hours a day without a moment's rest. The forces on it are fairly enormous. And not just the forces, but the duration. So things can easily tend to work themselves apart without warning. Regarding the failure of the uh, below decks components that I covered in Inside Single-Handed Sailing, the video. This is the critical Wichert eye bolt 5 sixteenths inch that failed as a result apparently of side forces and uh, I replaced that by borrowing the uh, stainless steel pad eye that I connect my cockpit tether to and I used in the installation about a dozen of these these nice Ronston blocks However, their shackles can't be safety wired closed and uh, the Loctite I put on them uh, failed. Here's what's elegant about the Cape Horn. We're looking at it. 
most of these devices, including my beloved Salomat 800, which I gave, sold to a friend who has long distance plans, and then wished I'd had it back. Most of them are composed of a big apparatus that bolts onto the stern. The Cape Horn is elegant because that's what you see and it isn't very obtrusive. Another aspect of its value is that a wind vane puts a drum on the wheel. These are the fittings that it formerly used, which blocks, and it, the control lines block one side of the cockpit, which a Cape Horn doesn't do. There are no lines here to oppose passage between the wheel and the rest of the cockpit. That's the way a vane is supposed to behave. More or less up and down. If it stays on one side permanently, it means that your sails are not trimmed right and the boat's fighting the helm all the time. It's asking quite a lot of a wind vane to steer a boat straight through waves, dead downwind, as this is called. And the reason is simply that the waves that we're sailing over are at a diagonal to the vessel. And as this wave lifts us and we surf, the boat then rolls as a result of the angulation of the waves. And when the boat rolls, by its hull form, if it rolls that way, it wants to turn that way. If it rolls that way, the bow just wants to turn that way. The self-steering gear cannot anticipate that. It can only react to what happens. So there's always a lag. But still, it's miraculous that they do as well as they do under these conditions because if I were to take the helm manually, it would be a full-time job to keep this boat going in a straight line downhill. I, as a human being, I'd be able to anticipate the fact that this wave is coming. I would feel the boat subtly start to move that way, and I would correct like that. And then when it moved, I would correct the other way. And then I would correct the other way. And then I would correct as necessary. However, I have to be able to anticipate it. Well, a wind vane is a mechanical mule. It doesn't think, it just does. So there's always a lag. Every crew with a wind vane is eternally grateful for it because as I've said so many times steering a boat 24 hours a day is a waste of manpower what a boon it is to have any pendulum wind vane they uh, are a gift to single-handers that cannot be appreciated too much and it gets really personal with wind vanes. You sail them more than you sail the boat. You tend to their every need. And every night as you lie in your bunk with 30 knots howling through the rigging in black following seas, raising her stern and plunging her bow. And as you feel the surf begin running ever faster down the face of the wave behind you that you can't see, waiting for the brooch the inevitable occasional turn sideways in which the boat is knocked on its side, all the sails start flapping and you have to get up out of bed and say, why am I here? We haven't broached once this voyage. Thanks, Windane.